start of our Willy Wonka-esque type processing in our mill and these stages here the Worsted spinning process we're going to go through from 1 to 10 so first up is carding so here we go so first up is carding with uh, Chapman which I'm standing in front of us our lovely old 1950s tape and carder um, this is the beginning of the process for us, although the wall's already been scoured elsewhere. We don't do scouring here. And by scouring, I mean the cleaning and removal of the dirt and impurities of the fiber. So it's nice and clean for us, ready to process. So we'll put the board down for a second. These boards are available on our website and you can download them as a PDF. So you can have a, a muse of what it says in a little bit more detail, but essentially, we're going to turn this lovely clean, it is clean, it's not greasy, uh, tangled mass of zwartblers or zwart balls, if you're from the wall board or if you're Juliet. And we're going to detangle it and turn it into what I would call a sliver. And then eventually into a lovely uniform top like this one, which I did earlier. And you're going to see this process all the way until a finished yarn. Anybody who's a uh, hand spinner will know and prepping fleeces is they're going to use something similar to these hand carders. So we've got pins on each paddle and basically we've got a whole series of pins all around our carder which basically tease the fibre apart and they're action, where they're in action, working together. Like that, something like that, I'm not very good at that. So, if you're wondering why uh, Chapman is behind the cage, it's because he's quite a nasty, vicious beast. I'm the only one allowed to use it, but all my fingers. Because he does bite, he's, um, he's got no shut off, and uh, it will kill you. So he's behind the cage, and um, but back along, they used to have series of these in a mill, and uh, would be the cause of many a nasty accident to the operators. But he's safely behind a cage, and it's all good, and we're all following a health and safety code. And Chapman is called Chapman uh, after the rather wonderful Northern engineer who located the machine. second stage of our worsted processing and this is straight after carding so we've carded our zwartlers which I've got here uh, into a sliver and here's a board explaining that process again there's a PDF of this you go to the website you download it and it'll give you a little bit more detail about what's going on In the meantime here's our sliver that we've done now the fibers are sitting in a sort of fairly random orientation uh, there's full of uh, vegetable matter and if I give it a shake bits do fall out so there's lots of short fibre and stuff in there which we want to remove. Um, so what we're going to do is gill this twice 
and then we can present it to the cone. And by gearing, what I mean is, you can see here, there's a rather vicious looking set of uh, teeth pins at the top, and there's a set at the bottom, and these pins basically race through the fibre, uh, straight in the fibre, and making the fibres parallel so we can present it to the comb. Because if we looked at the fibres, they look a bit like that. And what we want to do is straighten the fibres and straighten out the hooks on the ends. And to do that, whilst it's going through the gearbox, we run it in one direction, straightens the fibre out, swap it around the other direction, straightens that hook out as well. Okay, but it's not finished. Uh, it's not until we comb it, we can call it a top. And here's a, one of the fuller bars with the pins on it taken out of the machine. Okay, so I'm going to drop the head down and then set it going. So here we are, stage three of our Worsted process and we're continuing with the swarblers and we're now going to comb the swarblers in our lovely old combing machine which is full title is a NSC PB28 rectilinear comb bit of a mouthful but that's what it is and this is our cleaner and it's going to remove all the little short bits of fibre all the bits of vegetable matter and any debris or uh, Kempy type fibres or baler twine or anything that we don't want in there it's going to remove it so it makes a lovely lovely clean tops. These are the Zwartbler's uh, sliver that we, we've actually gilled twice so the fibres have been straightened uh, but we've still got it full of rubbish that we want to remove and there's lots of bits of vegetable short bits in there so we've got 16 ends coming into this uh, wonderful comb and basically there's a rotating pin comb inside there that's going to basically comb away all the short bits. And the way it does that, it takes a fringe of fiber uh, and it's grabbed by some reciprocating rollers that draw the fiber across a gap, which is predetermined. Anything that's left behind is held down in some jaws and pressed onto this rotating pin drum. And then they're drawn away and then there's a a brush, a bit like a household brush that's spinning round, brushes it off and it drops out the bottom as what we call oil. So if you want to see what the oil looks like, it drops down into a collecting box underneath. And there we go. And that's all the short and bits of vegetable matter. This is what we call first oil. There's another collector of second oil at the back. But we take all of that out the, of the uh, tops. So if we left it in, you'd shake your arm and all this rubbish would drop out. So we're end with lovely clean tops and the cans there we go so this is our nsc auto labeling gill box called cuffbook and you may say what is that well there is a, a lovely board that tells you all about it but i shall give you a few notes on here we've got the warblers that we've combed and because of the nature of combing it separates the fibre and, and layers it, separates it and layers it so you get this sort of draft wave in, in the top because it's called a top once it comes out of the comb. Uh, so what we need to do is level off the top and it has a very clever device, pressure device that measures where it goes thin and where it goes fat and so what it does is adjust the draft from where it detects it to where it exits to level the tops, hence it's called an auto level. So I shall press the button and we shall run the warblers through and now we'll come to some lovely level tops and our job is done. Alternative stage for uh, another spinning machine, which is our uh, ring spinner, which is fed by tops, known as a sliver spinner. 
and what we're doing here is on trusty old A2D2. I'll um, call it A2D2 because this was already written on it. It sounds a bit Star Wars, so we like that. And um, this machine is actually prepping, it's a gill box and it's prepping a Marie Wallen uh, shade called Silver Birch from her British Breeds range, which is made from our Exmoor Blueface, Blueface Leicester from Exmoor, Wensdale from Exmoor, and Zwartlers from Exmoor. So a complete complement of local wool uh, going into a yarn. Uh, so we are just knocking down. That's all we're using the gill box for. So it's grafted it down to weight, ready so it can be fed into the slipper spinner. So. There are two directions to go in spinning, as we uh, mentioned earlier. The first one which you've seen is to spin using our spinner, sliver spinner, which we call Kevin. The other way is to spin using our machine, which we call Butler, which is also a ring spinner, but it's supplied by Rovings, has been supplied by Sliver, or in our case, Tops. So, as before, we're using the gill box, Ralph, I love a little gill box and we are actually making a small batch here of our knit by numbers and we've got grass green going in which is going to be made into roving but first we've got to knock the the uh, tops down to the right required weight so that it can go through a draw box then it can go through a roving frame and then it can go onto the spinner so this is the first bit in this process Kevin, our big sliver spinner, although we use it with tops for just a generic name. Uh, Kevin we bought from Norway and uh, it's called Kevin because the dust box collects all the fibre. Someone had written Kevin on the inside, which is kind of scary. So we actually called him Kevinson because it came from Norway. So Kevin. Uh, but Kevin came in bits in crates and with no instructions. We had to lay them out in pieces and work them out and assemble how they're to, how to getting back together again, which we did. It took about a year, we got there in the end, uh, even though he wasn't complete with his gears, etc., which weren't sold to us, although they said they were, so we then had to get some gears made. So it's been a bit of a bother, this machine, but we love it now. So on here, we've got our Marie Wallen British Breeds. And this is what we call a double draft system. So the tops go in at a set weight and they're drafted once, drawn or drafted down, drawn and drafted a second time. And so then we've got a fine stream of fibre that's coming out that's added twist into it. And the twist is inserted between where it exits and where it catches onto the tube. So that's an uncertain twist, and then it's delivered onto the cock or the tube uh, as the singles. Oh, I should drop it now because it's come to an end, we've got to start it all off again. So here we are in the second route of our options to spin where we make a roving. So We've just done the tops and got them ready for the draw box. And we're going to draw it down into a heavy roving. And that's what this board is, I'm holding here. It's the uh, Prince and Smith Auto Leveling Raper Draw Box, to give it its full title, invented by a guy called George Raper. Uh, and this machine at the moment, actually, I am in the process of renovating. So, anyhow. Uh, could go on but this board is a PDF on our website you can download it read about it and then do further reading or ask me questions if you want afterwards. so I'm going to set this machine on so we've got two lots of tops we'd put two ends in just to level it off if there's any, any unevenness uh, although these are auto leveling boxes so they will level the roving as it goes it's got a clever measuring device pressure device 
it's able to detect where it goes thick and thin. So we've got a Viola Aquarius here and I've got a grass green knit by numbers, which I can't remember the number of. But 68. 68, there we go, <laughs> number 68. So I'm gonna set this on and basically the back draft is going slower than the front draft. So it draws the fibre out, We're not stretching anything. The fibres have been nicely prepared, so they're sliding and being drafted and drawn out. And then at the bottom here, we've got a bobbin it's delivered on. And as the fibre comes out, some twist is inserted. Enough twist to hold it together, but not too much so we can't draft it further because we're going to have to make a second lighter roving. And this is what we call a roving. Right, so I shall set it on now. making a roving so we've made a heavy roving which we did on the draw box called Drusilla and now we're on another Prince and Smith machine lovely old machine uh, which we affectionately know as James Henry so what this machine does I'll just put this board down there's another board there's another PDF which you can download it's got a bit more detail about the machine and what it does so you can have a look at that so we go from one roving to the next roving, so we're making just a lighter roving here. We put two ends up again just to level off from the evenness. Uh, the back roller is going uh, slower and the front roller is going faster. And between this gap, the fibres are being drawn or drafted out. And these funny little wooden rollers, uh, they're amblers and they just run over the fibre to control the draft. A bit like you do when you press on your finger if your hand's spinning. Here we are, stage seven of our worsted process, and this is the uh, our ring spinner, which we affectionately know as Butler, named after this gentleman here, who we managed to salvage and buy the machine from. We used to own Joseph Horsfalls up in Halifax. So this is a ring spinner because it spins around the ring. So and. The way that it operates is we make a roving, which we saw earlier on James Henry, and this is our Viola Aquarius, and then the fibre is drafted between this roller and the back roller. This little funny looking device here, it's just a little wheel with weights that runs over it, and that just controls the draft, known as an ambler. So this is an ambler spinner, better known as a super flex is what they called it and it's an old Prince and Smith machine which was bought out by Prince Smith and Stells and here are the cops with the spun singles yarn on them so we've got a ring and a little traveler and these are driven around at high speed which drags that traveler around and so what happens is we insert twist between this point and this point so drafting and then twisting and then delivery onto the package. This is some lovely uh, Viola Aquarius that we just spun on Butler, our lovely old Princeton Smith ring spinner. And we don't just by chance make the yarn and hope it's right. We actually measure it and make sure it's right. And we do this all the way through the process. So there's a lot of gear changing, etc. that goes on. But essentially this is our singles and this is what we call a, a single sevens which is three folds going to make us a DK which would be 233 meters. We we'll say sevens because it's the number of kilometers that weigh one kilo so if you ran off with a kilo of this you could keep going for a kilometer if you get that analogy and then we fold the yarn three so if you've got seven kilometers divided by three is 2.33 kilometers 
take that down to 100 grams, you've got 233 meters. The level of uh, twist we put into your yarn is quite crucial because uh, we're going to fold it in the opposite direction. And you say, why? Because it wants to do this. And when it folds back on itself, it makes a very strong and very balanced yarn and good definition. As I said, it's not by chance we arrive at our different weights of yarn. And because all our machines are mechanical, there's lots of gears. So we change the gears every time we run a machine according to the type of fiber and the type of count or type of weight that we want. So there's lots of gears, but essentially we change the draft wheel for the, 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 the uh, weight of the yarn and the twist wheel for the amount of twist we put into it. Here we are at position number eight of the worsted process and this time it's our lovely shiny new Bematex comb winder. So this is winding and basically I'm just going to put this down. Basically what we're doing is transferring uh, some spun singles on a cop which has been spun on Kevin uh, onto a cone so that we can put it on the next stage, which is folding, twisting, or if your hand it's a plying or a spinner. Uh, so then we can finish and make finished yarn. But we've got to transfer it off one package to another. This is basically all we're doing here. We can also, if we send in yarn out for sock making, which we don't do anymore, but we still make yarn for somebody who does still make the socks, uh, then we've got the finished yarn. We can transfer it onto a cone it can go off and go on to a sock knitting machine and be knitted. Or if we wanted to store the yarn after we've made it and not skein it straight away, we can also transfer it onto a cone and it's easier to store and then we take it off and skein it when we need it. Uh, this machine replaced our old Persona comb winder, which we still use, but this is far more efficient and a lot quicker and very, very quiet. Process number nine in the worsted process. So we're coming towards the final yarn and this is the stage where we fold our spun singles into the finished yarn onto a bobbin. Um, so we use a machine called a Boyd twister or folder or if you're a hand knitter you would call it plying. We call it tend to call it twisting and folding. Um, it's a lovely old Scottish machine which is a company is now defunct and basically what we do is transfer the singles that we spun in our Z direction and then we're going to fold it in the opposite direction which is S so that we make a nice balanced yarn. So the singles have been transferred to a cone onto here and in this case we are doing a two-fold yarn two ends coming through. It's a three-fold yarn, <laughs> not two-fold yarn. <laughs> it's a three-fold yarn. <laughs> so what we have here is the singles which we've spun on Butler, our spinning machine, and this is a weekend special. It's our Yarnadelic designed by the lovely Faye Dasher Dashba Hughes. Always called a Dasher, like a reindeer. Anyhow, we are actually folding it as a three fold, so there's three ends going in. Uh, these funny little things are detectors, so they knock back if, if it breaks and switches the head off, or if I knock it with my finger. Uh, this device here is just a tensioner, and then it's being twisted, so this is gonna go around. Uh, it's like the ring spinner with a traveler that's spinning around at a higher rate, that's setting the twist between here and here, and then delivering it onto the bobbin okay we spin it in z on butler and s on on the folder or twister or if you're hand knitting plier uh, so that we make a balanced yarn so you spin it in one direction and then fold it in the opposite direction
the end of the process. Number 10. As I said, all these boards are available online to download for the details. So this is what is known as a back. This is what is known as a Bradford winder, which is a skein winder, hank winder, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this one dates from, it's probably about 120 years old. Uh, a lot of it's been replaced or bodged with this metal frame, but the wood's been replaced with the guts of the machines, all original. And basically, it takes the yarn, which we've folded onto the bobbins, and we tie them up onto the beam. And then we've got a motor and a counter. And then when we switch the machine on, the skeins will, the arm will be wound into skeins of a predetermined length to weight. So we'll make sure it's exactly 100 grams dependent on the weight of the arm. It's a lovely old machine and we all love it dearly. And it's called Gillian after Juliet's very dear friend, Gillian, who sadly is no longer with us. But, uh, it's a lovely machine and we shall see it in operation. Thank you for visiting us on our virtual mill tour. Hope you enjoy it. Give me bread.